Lusk, a poem written by local man Leo Dunn. So much to tell about this place, one wonders where to start. We've tried to capture and preserve with DVD and art. But there's just so much history in this tiny village way. To capture all its riches is a task ongoing today. The process started years ago through the foresight of a few. And now we see the fruits of this for the future and the new. With many, many records, writings, interviews, videos and stories, you could say all the news of a place of ancient history, of a people who are gone, of buildings now preserved in time, of a very early dawn. And with the help of many friends we've taken to this task, we will continue to uncover and the centuries past unmask. Hello, it's 2009 and it's April and we're out on the trail again. We've made a series, a short series of films about the environment that we're living in. We've discussed the waterways and we've discussed what grows in the hedgerows. This time, for Lusk Tidy Towns, we want to tell you about the mark that humankind has made on this area since he first arrived in this country. When you're out in the countryside, you feel you're in the countryside, but what you see is not what prehistoric man saw when he first arrived in this island 10,000 years ago. Everywhere around you, you see the mark that man has made on the area. 10,000 years ago, when prehistoric Irish man arrived, what he saw was forest, marshes, lakes and rivers, and no way through them apart from the way that he could make himself. He pushed through the trees, he waded through the rivers, but eventually development propped up. Prehistoric Irish man wanted a house. He didn't go building himself a nice semi-detached or a bungalow. He settled for driving a few wooden posts into the ground, weaving branches through those posts, and the whole lot plastered with mud or clay. That was all very fine. Outside that, he could make a fence to keep out his enemies and to keep in his livestock. And that was what the first Irish residence looks like. We've seen that in the archaeological digs that were conducted before the new estates and the new ring road were built around Lusk. The marks are still in the subsoil where those very posts were hammered in. You can't do anything in this particular planet without leaving some mark behind you. That went ahead for a long, long time. Centuries, thousands of years in fact. Why build a road when there's nowhere to go? Why build a temple or a church when your god rose up every morning first thing and set in the evenings, the sun. Eventually, again, people had to move along. They didn't use stone as a building material that early in this area because stone was considered a sacred medium. Something made in stone, so far as prehistoric Irishman could see, lasted forever. That wasn't to be trifled with. Okay, on the continent, the Greeks and the Romans were building in stone for hundreds and hundreds of years before it started here. And it was only after St. Patrick's time in well into the heading for 1000 AD that travellers came from the continent and Irish monks went to the continent and came back bringing those skills with them to build in stone. And when Irish man took to building in stone, he just couldn't be stopped. The very first practical use of stone as a building material in this island was not to make a castle, or a cathedral, or a cinema, or anything like it, but to make a bridge. A bridge is a terrible useful thing to have if you're going off to visit or to steal the neighbour's cattle. You can't be fording all those streams in your good boots. And a wooden bridge just seemed to rot away and fall into the river. No, a bridge was the ideal thing. And you can see those perfect little stone arches under all the roads in this country. Even under the main roads, when you have a hard look down under the extended concrete items that have been put in in the meantime, there is that stone arch still working away perfectly after 500, 1,000, 1,500 years perhaps. We moved from bridges onto much more complicated things. We 
started with stone bridges. We moved on through gate piers. But then something changed this country's architecture. In came the Normans. Middle part of the 12th century and they brought with them stone building to extremes. What we've got here now is as good an example of the Norman Irish type of building. This belfry. It's behind it is the round tower built under the Celtic administration if you like. But the Normans took it to extremes. This stone belfry behind was attached to an early Catholic medieval church and monastery. This is going to last forever. There's no question about it whatsoever. The Irish cottage lasted a long time. A bit of a derivative from the early one we talked about, made of wood and patched with clay. In this instance, we've got less wood, more clay. And while the quality, our alleged quality, were living in their castles and their stately houses, still the Irish workforce and the Irish farmer built a clay house. Clay walls, poles for the rafters, thatched roof, wooden lintels, and everything in that house, and incidentally in the stone houses built locally, came from the locality. Until the concrete block was invented, everything came from the land in which the home was built. With the concrete block and with the roads that were built when the internal combustion engine came about, materials could move around. We had foreign timber, we had blocks produced wherever blocks could be and drawn to the site where the house would be built. The roads themselves had to be built and it took a conquering army of English people to supply us with all the roads we had. And milestones placed along them to let them know how far they were away from their target. About 150 years ago, or maybe a little more, about halfway through the 19th century, a whole new form of architecture arrived in Ireland. It followed a whole new form of transport, the railways. Railways set in in Victorian times, and with the railways came the stations. Dusk Rush, which is a mouthful in itself, they couldn't make up their mind which town to go to, so they stopped in between. Lusk Rush is one of those original Victorian built stations and it has this architecture of cast iron, brick and cut stone which marked this development. Under the Great Northern Railway, the GNR, which eventually gave way to CIE, which was Coruscant per Aaron, and now at this stage, Iron Road Aaron supervised this and do a magnificent job on maintaining this form of architecture that's here. The buildings look much the same all through Ireland, through Great Britain as well. It's marvellous to see that those bridges with the big steel trough which contains the road over above, built on those massive cut stone blocks, it really looks like something that's going to last and last and last into the future. It's again, it's as much a part of our heritage as a round tower is. And give it plenty of future here in the road there. Today houses come in neat rows, in estates and avenues and parks, but the marks that we have made on our environment since the first man rambled up to these shores 10,000 years ago are still there. The majority, the foundations and the post holes and the roadways still remain behind. They're all there under the tarmac, they're all there under the divisions that we've made in the land. And I hope even into the future, hundreds and perhaps thousands of years ahead, the remains of today's new houses will be there. Keep an eye on your future, keep an eye on your past as well. Mm -hmm.